Ken McNutt asks me a question. Uh, did the violence and terrorism that happened in your area affect you personally in any way? I don't know if you were born and lived in the same area your entire life. I'm just curious as to your take on the troubles. Yeah, I live in Portadown, which is the same town that I have lived in all my life. Um, Portadown is actually historically a very significant town in terms of the troubles. Uh, way back in 16 something or other, or was it 17 something or other, there was a mass slaughter of Protestants that occurred on the River Ban. It occurred basically at a spot where I ride my motorcycle past every morning on the way to work. Um, so to give you a little history on this, uh, you know, Ireland was originally its own country and it was Catholic. England, or Britain I suppose I should say, was uh, Catholic as well originally until Henry VIII uh, changed things dramatically and maybe you've seen the Tudors and that's the, you know, you, so you know the whole story of how he started the Church of England and aligned himself with Protestantism. But the English kings over the years were always tampering with Ireland, never leaving it alone and eventually there was an event called the Plantation of Ulster. Ulster is not quite synonymous with Northern Ireland but Ireland was originally divided into Ulster, Leinster, Connaught and Ulster, Leinster, Connaught, and I forget the fourth one. This is terrible, I'm actually forgetting uh, the, ge the, the geographical layout. Ulster, Leinster, Connaught, <laughs> never mind. It's basically divided in, into four, the whole island is divided into four. So Ulster is where I am, but it's also called Northern Ireland and it involves, Northern Ireland is slightly wider than Ulster. It involves nine counties instead of six. Anyway, I'm giving you, giving you far too much information here, but anyway. So the, the Troubles, people commonly think of the Troubles as a religious conflict, but that's actually kind of superficial. The Troubles happened because of a land grab. The English came over and settled and removed the indigenous population uh, from their homes, basically. Uh, so I am probably a descendant of British invaders of Ireland, so I'm the bad guy. Historically speaking, I'm the bad guy, right? So you can understand why the troubles happened. So there was a point in history where the Catholics fought back in, in Portadown, this particular event here in Portadown, where they basically took the Protestants who had taken their land and they drowned them in the river ban. They drowned them, their families, their children. It was a horrendous, horrendous thing that happened. I don't know what the numbers were, but it's a big historic event. Um, and to this day, uh, you know, my town is heavily divided in terms of, it looks like a religious division because the English settlers were Protestant and the indigenous population were Catholic, you see, but it was to do with land. It was really all to do with land. But it just manifests itself as a religious conflict. Um, so I live in an area of Portadown called Kilcomain, which is heavily Protestant. You wouldn't get any Catholics living there. There is another area of town uh, called the Gervachi Road or the Woodside area, which is 100% Roman Catholic. Um, I've always felt safe enough, you know, passing through Woodside, even, you know, in my younger days when, when the Troubles were in full swing, you know, as a kid riding my bicycle through there in my teenage years, because it's like, you know, I'm not wearing, <laughs> I'm not wearing a, a sweatshirt that says Protestant across it, you know. Um, I suppose if I were riding my bicycle through, wearing red, white, and blue, the colors of the Union Jack British flag, uh, yeah, something might have happened then. <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, and it's funny because a friend of mine, you know, I was saying to a friend of mine one time about going through Woodside, and he was like, what, you you went through there? So his opinion of the whole thing was so different, like he would have been afraid to go near the place, where I'm like, what, don't be stupid. Uh, I never got caught up in the conflict in any way. My parents, although born Protestants, had no interest in the conflict, had no interest in indoctrinating me in any way to be a proud Protestant or anything like that. In fact, uh, I got to know a Roman Catholic family in the next town over due to some work commitments that my mum had. My mum worked as a stitcher and uh, some evenings she would go to this Roman Catholic family and I would go with her and I would play with the kids of that family and got to know them really well. Uh, I just all the only difference to me was I noticed certain strange things like like the guy's bedroom he had some kind of religious statue of the Virgin Mary sitting on sitting on the windowsill and I looked at that and I was I never asked him about it but I thought oh that's really strange and you know there's just this different perception of you know Catholics have this mysticism in their religion that Protestants just don't have at all. And I guess there was a feeling of protection, probably, by having this statue. Um, yeah. The only time the Protestant, or the only time that the Troubles uh, affected me personally was I had a childhood friend, a guy called Roger Love. Uh, I mean, we grew apart in middle school, what we call junior high school. But in primary school, we were good mates. And he, in later life, in his late teens, was a member of not a, some kind of a, what was it? Was it the Territorial Army or something like that? Um, I forget, but he, he joined some kind of military unit, not, not paramilitary, this was legit. Uh, government sanctioned military uh, and one day when he was about 20 years old uh, a terrorist organization called the INLA uh, they th they bombed the army Land Rover that he was in and he died they threw a pipe bomb into it or something and he died so that's the one death related to the Troubles conflict that uh, was the closest one to me. Um, nothing else has ever really happened. Oh well, yeah, something else really did happen. There was one day in my early 20s when I was, one Saturday morning, I was sitting in a Bible study. Yeah, back in those days. Uh, and there was about 10 of us in the room. And the pastor was talking away and we were all chatting about stuff. And all of a sudden, we just heard this in the distance and I can remember the pastor looking up and going that's a bomb and sure enough our town centre all the shops are was bombed by the IRA and some bombs are worse than others ours was one of the one of the kinder bombs in that the town was evacuated before the bomb was set off. So as far as I'm aware, there were no deaths involved, just the destruction of people's businesses. Um, and then the whole town center had to be rebuilt. Um, yeah, that was horrendous. Uh, at the time, it didn't really, felt a bit surreal at the time, if I'm honest. Uh, I didn't have a big emotional reaction to it. I don't think I was mature enough, even though I was an adult, I was a young adult. Uh, I didn't have a huge emotional reaction to it. If a, if a bomb went off in my town centre now, I think I would be a lot angrier than I was then. Um, yeah. I mean, my growing up in my town, I remember the frequent presence of army land rovers and police land rovers and army personnel walking around with rifles, you know, and even some with camouflage paint on and everything. Um, it wasn't uncommon to 
walk down the street and see an army guy crouched by somebody's head, just waiting like that. And I never had this feeling that, oh, something's going to happen, I better get out of here. He was just on patrol, kind of doing his job, you know, hanging around. Uh, I remember one time walking home from the town centre and an army guy on foot stopped me and said, uh, could I look in your bag? <laughs> and I just took the bag off my shoulder, let him look in it. And uh, <laughs> he let me go on my way. But it all just seems so commonplace. Yeah, I remember that I've kind of a funny story. Uh, I think this was the police, not the army. Yeah, it was the police. I was out in the, in the countryside surrounding my town, driving my 4x4, or SUV as you call them in America. And um, I would guess I was in my late 20s at the time. And I was stopped at a, a police checkpoint and I showed my license and everything and I was just in a jovial sort of mood and I said, uh, what's, what's going on guys? And he didn't say anything and I was like, oh, top secret, eh? And he, for some reason he really didn't like my attitude. Uh, so he said, could you open up the back please, sir? And uh, so I opened up the back and then I saw this bin liner lying in my lying in the back of my car and I thought oh no <laughs> because it was totally innocent but in this bin liner were army surplus uniforms about four of them uh, you know something that you might wear if you wanted to pose as army but you could buy this stuff you know in an army surplus store and I had them because we were in the middle of making a movie called Dark Light which was about vampires in the military, right? I must upload this at some point for people to watch. Um, so I had these things just lying, and he says, can you account for what's in your, uh, what's in the boot of your car, sir? And I'm like, um, yeah, there's, and he, I saw him opening this, and oh, it was just awful. And I had to say, look, those are there because we're making a film. And then he just, he, he, he said very little, but I just saw the little notepad coming out and he started taking down my number plate. Now, of course, nothing happened as a result of this. Uh, and he said, as I was leaving, happy filmmaking. But it was true. And, you know, we, we had a website up and everything. And I said, look, you, this is legitimate. You can check it out. I'm not lying to you. But that was a funny and awkward conversation. Yeah. In my youth, I remember there were no police cars. There were only police Land Rovers. Well, there were police cars, but they were always unmarked. Uh, we see now the, the proper police car with the stripes and the, and the uh, you know, it says police along the side of it. But back in the day, you just had these sort of dark colored, unmarked Ford Escorts and things. Uh, and mostly what you saw were police Land Rovers, these big armor-plated gray Land Rovers. So there was the green Land Rovers were the army and the gray Land Rovers were the police. And that was uh, what we saw roving about our streets. My placement year at university uh, was in a police station uh, in Belfast. So that was interesting, but I, I would come and go every day driving my mum's black Ford Escort <laughs> and my mum was always worried that I would be mistaken for a police officer and followed home because of what I was driving. Um, I guess that's something that could have happened but it, it honestly never really worried me much. Uh, see despite the troubles I guess you know it was, it was probably worse in other parts of Northern Ireland but I really felt like I had a normal, happy childhood because this is all we'd ever known. And for the most part, the tensions were there, but they mostly never erupted into anything. I do remember, you know, where I lived as a child, a place called Abercorn Park. Uh, there was a particular event in the mid 80s where there was a riot 
in the little shopping precinct area which is really just you know scarcely more than 150 meters from the door of my house but yeah, there's a few rows of houses between my house and it there was a big riot and plastic bullets were fired the idea of a plastic bullet is it can wound a person but not kill a person um, yeah I always remember the police officers of my youth having uh, pistols on them and I always remember thinking you know when I'd see television dramas of English police officers carrying truncheons I always remember thinking what are you going to do with that <laughs> you know it seemed more natural to me that the police should be armed with guns um, and there was one point when the troubles were particularly high that the police uniform was different it was uh, it was all black and heavily armoured. Uh, yeah, just at a particular time.